It's time to summarize this challenging and very important chapter. First, we discovered that logic comes in different flavors, two important species of which are syllogistic and propositional logic. We find deductions in both of these, but they have different ways of arriving at conclusiveness. In propositional logic, inferences hinge upon relations among entire propositions. In syllogistic arguments, inferences depend upon the relations among the terms within the propositions. Here are some valid forms of propositional argument I'd like you to know. Modus ponens, if P then Q, P, so Q. Modus tollens, if P then Q, not Q, so not P. Hypothetical syllogism, if P then Q, if Q then R, so if P then R. Disjunctive syllogism, either P or Q, not Q, so P, and contraposition, if P then Q, so if not Q, then not P. The first of the criteria that we examined for deductive arguments was the condition that the premises in a deduction entail their conclusion, which is another way of saying that we can find no counterexamples and that we have a form that preserves the truth. The cash value here is that it's not possible that the argument's premises be true and its conclusion false at the same time, but the conclusion could be false if at least one of the premises is. Finally, it would be contradictory to accept a valid argument's premises and reject its conclusion. The second criterion we examined for deductive arguments was soundness. There are two conditions that must be met for an argument to be sound. The aforementioned entailment and true premises. The cash value here is that if an argument is sound, its conclusion must be true. To deny it is to say something false. Secondly, to assert its premises and deny its conclusion would be contradictory. Finally, we arrive at argumentative cogency. And there are three conditions that must be met for an argument to be considered cogent. Number one, recognized entailment. Number two, acceptable premises. And number three, premises that are more clearly acceptable than the argument's conclusion. And what is the cash value of cogency? Any argument that satisfies these three conditions is rationally compelling, in the sense that it would move the thinker to accept its conclusion. It would also be irrational for the thinker to reject the conclusion of a cogent argument. This segment concludes Learning Module 3.